Welcome to the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is always natural. But my son, Kuluman, you get saga zago and kosi beno pumzil. Hey, getting ilang abashogan jalo ng masan ng ati. No, I'm joking. That's how I talk when I present myself. Naman kibele pulpit. This other person kicks in. The apostle himself just kicks in. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I was a normal with this guy, no more stand. I said, Mama, I'm in the gorgeous. It's your turn, dogs. It's your turn, dogs. Yeah, Kulun Kulun Mosek, and Yakulu Chabusega, Elizabeth Gons, and I'm Sanjay Gosuko, and I get a fry there. And I know you're going to be blessed tonight. God is going to be a blessing over your life. Why? Because we are stand as long. Nam Sandex or Shumer about Bishop, so it's ending up in landing it under Naomi and a Beno Ruth, Baget, which Ruth was Suga, who now must go to the boy and Moab, Cantus of Bring us in a month to what is a boy and no Ruth, Wyom Landa, Gulella Sizu, two root wailing and a matota matat, a year to baggage. Got a gay, I guess, who clean a salad lock, okay, got a corner of grass, whistle, who goes when you leave your position. When you leave your place, when you lose everything, when you come back, you will find another position, another place. God will bless you. Let me not explain everything. Let a bishop, as Pim so me, my father, Baba Amongzalai, speak to you. It was a few years ago. With days of glory. May you be blessed. May his face shine upon you. May his joy fill your heart. May his peace that surpasses all understanding keep your mind and your heart in perfect unity. Please unga kuluk subscribe ago YouTube, ugu follow ago Facebook, ugu like ago Facebook, and ugu Twitter, kanjalo na Instagram. And yeah, you're gonna be blessed. Just follow us and tell your friends about us. And I'm telling you, as we grow, you're gonna be better. May God bless you. Till we meet next time, enjoy this sermon first before you leave. Thank you, brethren. May the Lord bless you. Ruth 1, verse 20 to 22. And she said unto them, Call me. Oh, let's start on verse 19, right? So they. So they Two went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? Bethlehem. <laughs> And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. What he gobo, Ningang bees in Goguti, Unaomi, Gibizen in Gogutu Mara, Gogobu so manda, Ung Patengo Munio, Um Kulu. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites. The, Omai, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Wabuyage unawomi ganye no ruti, waga muwabu maluga zana wake, o wabuyezwe ni laga muwabi, bafige Bethlehem kale ni kukuvunwa kwe bali. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray for your presence. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for your discernment. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ that you would give us the interpretation concerning Africa through this word. Amen. Before I, 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 I go to the story in full, let me deal with your psyche first. When you turn from darkness, God 
forgives you at that point. The problem with people, they punish themselves beyond what God has done. I don't, I don't know how to put it, right? Just try. Yes. When when Naomi decided to go back home, God had plans set up for her. At the point when she said, I'm going back. But as she was going back home, she told herself, I have sinned. I don't think God can forgive me. I don't think God will ever receive me back. She is walking with a hopeful convert. As she walks, there is Ruth beside her. Ruth has got this hope that I am going to live. But, but Naomi has this despair that God is not going to accept me. The two people have, have conflicting thoughts. One says, I have sinned and God is not going to accept me. The other one says, I am walking with a Jewish person who has got a covenant with God, so I am going to join this God. Sometimes we put people who want to be Christians off by our own despair. Tell me, listen to the story in, in the book of Luke. The prodigal son was forgiven on the day when he said, I will go to my father. He was not forgiven when he spoke to his father. He was, was forgiven on the day he said, I will go to my father. That is why when he came to his father he said father I'm not supposed to be called your son anymore he says take me as your servants his father ignored his pleas because you are you are crying over something that you have been already forgiven of. His father says, bring me a new garment. The boy says, I'm, I must be called a servant. The father says, bring me a ring. He does not entertain his cries. Because what he's crying about is no more on the charge sheet the charge sheet has been dealt with on the day he said I'm going home now, you, you must never act as if you are better than God you've got to understand God on the day you say Lord actually before you say Lord he knows you are going to say Lord he's starts preparing a fattened calf for you. He starts preparing a new garment for you. He prepares a new ring for you. By the time you knock on the door, everything is ready for you. Actually, you should be coming and jumping before God. 
and say, Lord, I know you are going to do it for me. For you have loved me with an everlasting love. So you need to understand that God loves you. God loves even Africa. During the 1976, there was this saying, I was not a Christian then. I only became a Christian in 1979. But when we were running around the townships, eh, there was a saying that even God loves Soweto. People said even God loves Soweto. You know 1976 how Soweto was? But somebody came and said God loves this township. No matter what you say about this township, God loves this township. So no matter how bad you are, God loves you. No matter how bad you have done, but God still loves you. When he says, I have loved you with an eternal love, everlasting love, you must always remember eternity is not going forward only. Eternity begins in the past and finishes in the future. Actually, I use wrong words because of lack of a better word. Eternity never starts. But there is an eternity in the past. There is an eternity in the future. So when he says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, he means I loved you before you were formed. I loved you when you were in your mother's womb. I loved you when you were born. I loved you when you were smoking Daka. I loved you when you were smoking Wunga. I still loved you. When you rob people on the street, I still loved you. If I hated you, I would not have protected you from the other gangs who wanted to kill you. From the cars that would have ran you down if when you were drunk. But I had loved you and had protected you because my love is everlasting. It's not only going, starting now, going forward. On the day I say, Lord, I come to you, he says I've been waiting for you forever I've been expecting you to come forever the table is set for you there is your seat on the table nobody would have taken that seat because it was specifically made for you you see you see, you must never over punish yourself. Naomi went into that wrong route. Jesus says, Who do men say I am? They say, You are Isaiah, Jeremiah, are John the Baptist raised from the dead. And then he says, Who do you say I am? And then Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. When he says you are the Christ, he speaks to him as the eternal God. Because the Christ is the anointed. The anointer is, at, is eternal. He says you are the son of the living God. Actually, not just living today. Peter meant you are the son of the ever living God. When Jesus says, in the book of Revelation. He says, I was. I, I was alive. I died. And I live forevermore. 
Before I come to the name of Jesus Christ, let me go back to the story. Whenever you come to God, you must always know there are people who are watching you. Listen to God when he says Come boldly unto the throne Don't come fearing unto the throne Come boldly unto the throne To find grace and mercy To stand in the times of need I have sinned but I have seen Jesus Christ carrying my sins. So I must run towards Jesus. I must be happy going to the, towards the person who took my sins away. But Naomi was negative. She gets into the city. Even the name of the city when she gets there, it's called Bethlehem. The name Bethlehem means the house of bread. She's coming from, from poverty that side. She's going to a land where there is bread. But she is still, she's still afraid. But there is somebody next to her who's praising God even before she knew this God. She knows she's going to Bethlehem. She knows she's going to get bread there. Prophetically, she's going to get the word of God. Prophetically, she's going to to, 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 to meet Jesus Christ in that land. But naturally, that place is full of bread. Sometimes to know too much is too dangerous. Because so many times we lambast people for their sins and condemn them without telling them that there is a place called Bethlehem. There is a place called Calvary. There is a call, the place called Mount of Olives. There is also a place where the church shall meet with Jesus Christ. The, you know, the sermon that will bring hope to people I just want to give you hope for the whole continent of Africa. We have come out of Amadosi. We have come out of, of voodoo gods. We have come out of all other gods that are prevalent in Africa. We should be saying like David. I rejoice when they said we are God going to the temple of God. We should say like David, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. Never come to God negatively. For when you come to God negatively, it's the opposite of faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped Whoa. So when you come to God, you must know you're going to get. Because if you come to God with open arms, it's easy for him to rain down manna into your hands. But if you come to God with your hands at the back, he's not going to throw manna on the floor. I hope you understand that. Now as our Africans, we are supposed to know that the only way that can help us is to follow the leader called Jesus Christ. But I told you yesterday, some people who come with Jesus Christ are defective, defected. They they, they, they are not perfect, let me put it that way. But I said, even if Naomi fell from grace, she still had some verses left from the Bible. 
Even if she was off of grace. But she still had some hymns and choruses left in her. Ruth said, if she tells me this, if she tells me this glorious story, I want to get to the place. I want to find it out for myself. Mar, uh, uh, Naomi comes to Bethlehem. Every, the whole city starts shaking. Hey, let, let, me, let me tell you something. Have you ever fallen from grace? And you don't, you didn't come to church for two weeks. No, 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 it's not two weeks. Let's say six months. You've gone for six months. Everybody says, she left us. And then on the seventh month, you want to come back. You know the battle that will go into your, in your heart? When I get back to the church, they won't accept me. The devil tells you, you will hear them what they say. Immediately you get into the door. This is what they're going to say. Oh, long time no see. Immediately somebody says, long time no see. The devil tells you that. See, I told you. I told you they say, you, you, you've been away for too long. But actually the person simply means, I'm glad to see you. I haven't seen you for some time but I am glad to see you. You can turn around and run away simply because you listen to the devil. We love you in the church. You can come running to the church. You will find us opening our arms and telling you to come running. Now let's come to, to Naomi again. For we are we are Ruth as Africans, we are Ruth. Now we are walking with Naomi. Naomi is so negative in her heart. But we are, the, we are going to see this God for the first time. Ruth and myself are hungry. We don't even have a house because we have left the place for 10 years. We don't know where we are going to stay. We come to this, this city. The whole city shakes. The whole city is happy to see Naomi. And she says, no, don't. Is, but they say, is this Naomi? Is she still alive? We are happy she's still alive. But she says, don't call me Naomi. Because Naomi means sweet. But call me Mara. For God has dealt with me bitterly. Mara means Peter. She gives herself, she baptizes herself with negativity. My name is Peter from now on. I don't care whether you tell me about the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I don't think the blood of Jesus can help me. And Ruth is just standing next to her. She wants to tell her don't be like this. For if you are like this, you are thwarting my way to accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. At least she just kept quiet. And then the following day, when both of them were hungry, Ruth asked her, can I go to do some, some begging? She knew something. Because Naomi told her, if you are poor in the land of Israel, God had decreed that those that are rich, when they reap, 
They must leave something for the poor people. She didn't have this law at, in, in Moab. She thought if I go to that land, I will never go hungry. We, we lived with, with Naomi and Opa. No, oh, but there were times when we slept without food. But if I can get to this woman's land, I will never sleep without food. She rises, rises up in the morning. Can I go somewhere? Find some food. I will follow up behind the reapers. I will do exactly what God has said. Pick up the leftovers. But let me tell you something, Africa. When you turn to God, He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan already written down. All you need to do is to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. For you don't understand the plan. The plan is hidden deep down in God. He he unfolds the plan slowly because he cannot give it to you one time. Your computer would crash. So he gives you one at a time. So she wakes up in the morning. She asks her mother-in-law, can I go Kotoza? And Naomi says, you can go. Listen to the plan of God. The first verse of chapter 3. It just mentions that there was a man called Boaz who was rich in Bethlehem. Then it leaves Boaz alone. It doesn't talk about Boaz in the next uh, verse. Talks about Naomi. And then Naomi goes out. She doesn't know if this man has got a field of barley. She didn't even know where the, the um, where 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 the, the field would be. She didn't even know Boaz. So she just moved out. She didn't know there was a hand holding her. She moved from the house straight to the field of Boaz. She started following the reapers. Picking up what is left over. I want you to understand that God has got a plan for you. She starts picking up these things. Hey, there is a verse I want to read. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll be able to read the verse. But let me just tell you something. During the height of the day, I mean, Boaz comes to the, the, to the field just to check the workers. Suddenly, he sees this woman. He doesn't ask about anybody else. He says, whose damsel is that? Why? Why? Why does he ask about this woman? Why doesn't he ask about other women? It was a plan of God. Naomi is coming with a negative, uh, negative attitude. Naomi is coming with a negative attitude. But it's an opportune time. Because right now, it's the time for the barley harvest. 
it's time for them to get full. But unfortunately, Naomi is negative. Naomi cannot receive because she's negative. So let all those that do not have faith remain at home. But let those that have faith move out to get the things. So Ruth goes out to get the things. She goes right to the person who is the correct person to help her. When the man comes to the, to the fields, he greets everybody. Then his eyes, yes, Clue to this woman. He says, Whose is this damsel? He wants to know who does she belong to. Deep down in my heart, I know what he meant. If she could be mine, I would really appreciate it. But I need to know whose damsel is this. And then they, taught, they tell him this woman is that Moabish woman that came from that came from Moab the land of darkness the woman that was born by incest she is here that's the woman that is here some people will never forget your past they will never forget that we are the darkest continent on the earth they will never forget that we have wars all over Africa they will never forget that we are we are a poor and uneducated continent even our people who play soccer overseas. Some of the best players from Africa. They score goals overseas. But you will find that there are spectators. There are spectators on the outside. They will take bananas. And throw them in the field. Saying. No matter you score goals, but you are a monkey. You are a monkey. You understand? Some people will never forget your past. That's the thing I want you to forget today. She is a Moabite woman. She was not born like us. She is not as pure as we are. She is right here. But the man who talks these things does not know that the righteousness of Ruth has preceded her. The righteousness of Ruth is all over the city. That even though she is a Moabite, but she clung to, to Naomi. She kept her hand on Naomi. She divorced her people and said your people are my people she divorced her land she said wherever you stay I will stay she divorced the graves of Moab she said where you will be buried I will be buried she divorced all the gods she said your God shall be my God that was that preceded her when she stepped on Bethlehem everybody knew who was coming that's why the whole city started shaking we got a new guy on the block we got a new Christian on the block we got another prophet on the block a different 
different prophet, a different apostle. Yes, he comes from the taverns. Yes, he comes from jail. Yes, he comes from all the bad places. But let me tell you something. He has left all those places. He had in jail that outside there is a Jesus. He decided to take Jesus in jail. And he is now right here. We need to learn to accept such prophets. We all have a past. But the past does not define our future. We, we forget about the past. I let, be, let go of what is behind. Oh my God. If a person is in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, new things come forth. I want you to understand. Africa, I want you to understand. They look down upon us. But the Lord has come down. He said, I, I have heard your cry. I heard you cry in Messi's house. You, you were washing her underwears. And you were complaining you were getting a little money. You wanted to take your children to school. But he says, I heard your cry. I saw your tears. I have come down. To free you. So I want you to get ready. Because I've got something prepared for you. Just move out. The first place where you are going to start picking up the leftovers. This time is going to be the right place. Let, me, let that message go. For the new boss is going to come. The new boss is going to pick you up. The new boss is going to love you. The new boss will want to know who you are. Some people don't even know who you are. You are just a number. You are just the statistic. But this boss, he wants to know who you are. He wants to know who do you belong to. He says like he wants you to belong to him. He goes up to her. If, 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 if Africa can go to God, I'm telling you some, some beautiful things are going to happen. If Africa can go to God, our government could change. Our banks could change. Our schools, education would change. Our health system would change. Because there's something prepared for us. When I heard Jesus say, I want Africa saved, it was like God was saying, I see all the races coming into heaven. But I see only a few from Africa. I see a lot of Africans going to hell. So he comes back, he says, Babumso. He doesn't call me Babumso. He calls me by my first name. I told you my first name yesterday. I won't tell you today because it's all long yesterday I let it slip. You see, God has prepared something for Africa. When he looks at his table, I'm just thinking, he's seeing all the races around. He says, oh my God. Africa says it's free. Africa is the last country to be freed in South in Africa. But the whole of Africa is still bound. I need to come, I need to come down and lead them myself. 
Because they have been disappointed. Disappointed by political leaders. Disappointed by religious leaders. Disappointed by by teachers who rape our children at schools. They, they are disappointed everywhere. You want an identity card. You have to pay. You have to pay for what belongs to you. He says, I have come down. When I open a door, Nobody can shut. Even the, the filthiest person who takes bribes. Cannot take a bribe from you. This is what happened one day. A traffic cop stops me. He says to me, Latin. Your lights are not right. I said, yes, I know that. He looks at me. He says, what do you say? I say, what can I say? The only thing I can say is that I'm sorry. He says, what? You know, it's, it, it will cost you 500 rand. What did you say? I knew when he says, what do you say? <laughs> if, 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 if it's going to cost me 500 rand, what do you say? No, he wants, he wants to be clean. But I must say something. He looked at me. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to a meeting. What, what meeting? I said, the pastors are meeting at the hall. He looked at me. He said, go. I left. Nobody. He said this thing one day at Umlazi. He said to us, behold. I'm setting before you an open door. You see, if the door is open, when he opens the door, nobody can shut the door. When he shuts the door, nobody can open it. He decides which doors because he has a plan for you. He has a plan for Africa. There is a place in, in heaven for all of us, brothers and sisters. Prepare yourself. Mephibosheth was not aware that there is a place for, 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 for the survivors of the family of Saul. He was lame from his waist down. He was a non-entity. He couldn't be a king. But the place was already prepared on the table of David. No matter he was a cripple, but the place was already there. So David brought him to the table. Mephibosheth asked a question. Why do you care about me, a dog? Mephibosheth calls himself David never called him a dog Mephibosheth calls himself a dog Now this very dog has got a place on the table of the king There is a mentality that we need to change People may call you names People may call our continent names But I know what God said I once told women in the free at the African Women con uh, Conference. I said, please, please, whoever tells you that you are nothing, you are second best to God. Any man who says something denigratory to you, remember one thing. 
that the first man who saw you looked at you and said now this is bone of my bones this is flesh of my flesh some men are crippled here they, they, they will call you names but remember what Adam said. Wow. What he? Wow. Wow. I've never seen something beautiful like this. Thank you, God. This is now. Bone of my bone. And God didn't scold him for that. He, he turns around thousands of years later. He tells Paul, tell the people, my daughter, love your wives. He was repeating what was said on the first day. Thousands of years later, love them. Amen. Amen. Now look at this Africa. This is a damsel from Moab. This is the damsel that has five children out of wedlock. This is the former prostitute. Lo obe you must answer them like this, Africa. I know. I was blind. But now, I see. What matters now is that I see now. Don't tell me that I was, I was, I was blind yesterday. I didn't see your faces yesterday. But I can, tell, I can see you now. I didn't know you guys were so beautiful. I forgot my past. I'm dealing with Bethlehem. And then this is what God says. Boaz, go speak to her. Go speak to her. It's like God is sending the Holy Spirit to tell you that I love you. He comes to her. He says, never go to any other place now. Here. Reap behind here. Until we finish reaping. It was like he was telling her, you are part of this all. You are part of my heritage now. You are no more a foreigner. Don't go to anybody. And then he turns around to the boys who are working here. He says, look after this girl. Nobody must touch this girl. She's wondering why. Because I'm just a Moabish girl. She goes to her. She goes to him. Why am I finding this favor? I am no better than all the girls that are in the field. And then Boaz tells her, listen here, you are better than them. You may be a Moabite. You are better than her. Because there is something that you did. You protected our relative. When she was away in the Moab land. You stayed with her. You brought her here. See, she is afraid to walk in the streets because of her disgrace. But you are 
moving out to look for food for her. She should be going out to look for food. But you are looking for food for her. You left your gods. You joined our gods. You came to the people you don't know. You joined yourself to these people. You deserve, this is what he says, you deserve the protection of the almighty God. You know why that happened? It was her righteousness that preceded her even before she was able to come to the land. Everybody knew let me give you another example when the Israelites came from Egypt I almost said they came from Kibit <laughs> okay alright the two spies get into Rahab's house they ask would you hide us and then Rahab Rahab Another woman with a past. Hey, you, you must always look at the Bible. All those women had a, have a past. Not a beautiful past. They have a past like you. You have had five men. Even the sixth one is not yours. He's a stolen husband. <laughs> there is a possibility of the seventh one. The seventh one is going to be the Jesus Christ. Who's going to wipe all the six men away. And you will become a new creature. <laughs> you see, seven stands for what? Number of completion. So Jesus is the seventh husband. Take me. I'd wipe away all the, the six ones. Six is the number of the flesh. It's the day man was, born, was made. So all flesh shall be taken away. You'll get married to the king of kings and the lord of lords. And Boaz tells this woman, you deserve Sometimes God says you deserve something. And, and you just wonder why. Sometimes I sleep on the couch. And I tell, I, I tell God. Lord. I'm a failure. You know me. But I love you. And one thing I know. I love you. I love you when I say hallelujah. I love you when I say glory. I love you when I say rabba bashanda riba kotosh. I love you when I say I love you Lord. I can't even pray. But I love you. You know I love you. Which is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your strength, and your spirit. Love you, Lord. I love you with the hallelujah. I love you minus hallelujah. I love you with the rabba bashanda. I love you minus rabba bashanda. I love you because you have loved me before I loved you you loved me while I was yet a sinner some people think love is an emotion hey, love is not a emotion sometimes it manifests itself in motion you were singing taking Africa taking Africa to divine where you were not sing <laughs> I actually cried I actually cried Twice. thank you
You know, love is more than an emotion. Love is action. Love is action. For God so loved the world that he gave. You give. That's love. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Hey, Ruth. And then one one day, Boaz says, This is what is going to happen to us. Just don't lose this thing. We all have a pastor. We all. But Tabile once said, we all have our skeleton in the closet. <laughs> I know you don't know who Tabatabile is. <laughs> we all, she was telling the truth. But your skeletons in the past mean absolutely nothing in God. If you come to him, he will blot away all your sins. Let me tell you, if you are a skeleton, your leg is there, your thigh is there. Your head is there. I'll tell you something. God will send a prophet. He'll just call a prophet. He'll ask the prophet first. Mr. Prophet. Mr. Prophet. Can these bones live again? When everybody says these bones can't live. And the prophet says, I don't know. You are the only one who knows. And then God says, prophesy. Prophesy even if you don't believe. Prophesy. Speak this, speak this. These bones should come together. And a miracle will happen. Things will fall together. Not like Chinua Achebe's novel, which says things fall apart. But when the prophet of God prophesies, each bone looks for another bone. It looks for the right bone. Everything comes together. He keeps prophesying. He keeps prophesying. And then the whole and the, and then the skeleton stands up. Once the skeleton stands up, God says it's not finished yet. It cannot stand like this. We need sinews. We need sinews all the places so that the skeleton can move like this. And then when the skeleton has got sinews and God says it's still ugly, prophesy flesh upon this thing. It takes time to get a man in full. It takes time to get a nation total. But the prophets must keep on prophesying. Keep on prophesying. Keep on prophesying. And then, and then he says, okay, right. No, it's so beautiful. But it's not living. No. I want you to prophesy one more time. Pepeta. Breathe life. Pepeta. Breathe life. Pepeta. And then you breathed life. And then the life came into the body. And then the body comes up. And you look at yourself. Is it really me? The former Moabite? Is it really me? The former Sangoma? Hey, is it really me? The guy who was riding a, a, a baboon at night? Is it really me? Who was worshipping the devil? Astral projecting from my body? 
to go and strangle other people at night. Is it really me? Because God sent a prophet to prophesy. This is what you said. This is what he said. I said, look at us. He took us. Dr. Swane took us from from nothing. But look at us. You were dancing, yeah. I don't want to dance because I'll beat you when I dance. <laughs> you know, when we speak the word, it's life.